I'm uh, Jerry Girls. I'm not a lecturer, so you got to bear with me. But I tell you one thing I can do, I can go out of the body. So with the little short time we have, I'll explain a little bit of this to you. And maybe you can get a hint that you can do it too. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, we'll start off. Last year at the Expo in Los Angeles at the Civic Center, I was in St. Paul. I'm sure you all heard of Bill Jenkins. He used to have the Open Mind Show. He called me up and he was having a program. And he said, Jerry, could you do me a favor? I says, well, what do you need, Bill? He says, I got a, I got a show going on. And we're going to put a box with laser beams on it. We want you to come from St. Paul in a matter of minutes and move that box for us. He said, do you think you, you, you can do it? I said, Bill, no problem. So uh, we'll start off a little bit of showing you of the tape they took of it, and then we'll end up with the program at the end, the results. During this part here, I'll tell you how I got into astral projection. I could astral project all my life with no problem at all. I, uh, what I did find out that other uh, kids couldn't do it, then I felt a little strange. But uh, I used it for my advantage when I was a kid in school. Because I got caught a couple times. The night before, I'd get the answers for a test, get down, Come on, come up with a not a, not a one answer wrong, <laughs> and they caught on to it. And I, I was brought up Catholic, and I was going to Catholic school, and I told the nuns that I could do this. Oh. You know, it, it was uh, it was uh, so I uh, I had a uh, a grandmother that could do it, and I told her about it, and she says, hey, she says. She said, Jerry, you got something special. She says, I can do it too. But she says, don't tell anybody. Just keep it a secret. So I went through this just uh, about my whole life. Just astral projecting, doing what I want to do. I went to different places. I went over with people that left their bodies for good. I took them over said farewell to him and came back to the body. I took my own brother over. And uh, the day I took him over, I got him over. We got him to, which I call the astral plane. And there stood my father and my grandmother waiting for him. And people, this is the truth, the honest truth. I'm not, because I'm not selling nothing. I'm just giving you a lecture. I'm not having a workshop. I just want to let you in a little bit that might help you out. And he looked at me when we got him there. He says, uh, what happened? You died too? <laughs> I says, no. I said, no. I said, no, Judy. I'm just here to help you over. I got to go back. I went through the astral plane. What do they call, when you, when you leave for the last time, they call the Hall Judgment. It's a beautiful place. Matter of fact, when I look over this uh, place here where the Civic Center is, it does remind me of it. And when the people come there, they go through this hall, they call it the Hall Judgment. And as they walk through, there's a beautiful white light. You probably heard a lot of people talk about the white light. And as they go through that white light, I was on the... Uh, standing on the side watching. Their whole life, their whole life go in front of them. Everything they did good, everything they did bad. When we want to go somewhere here on earth when the physical, we get in a car go or we walk it. But when you're out of the body, you think it. And when I was up there one time, I met a good friend of mine. He wasn't a friend then, but there was this man with a black beard standing and waiting for me. And I asked him what he wanted. 
He says, he says, my name is Mora. He said, I'd like to work with you. And I says, what kind of work? He says, I just want to help you so I can get this, uh, that we can carry this message out to the souls here on earth. And ever since that, you've been with me. And the most important thing is, I said, Maura, how can I tell you if you're with me? I said, when I'm in a body, I don't know. He said, we're going to open up a channel on you. And when I, like I'm speaking now, the channel goes open. And I know he's standing right here by my side. You take one of our great generals. Matter of fact, I talked to him in the Astro. General George Patton. He only comes to earth, they call what they call a warrior spirit. He only comes to earth when there's going to be a great war. Otherwise, he stays up there. And he always goes on the righteous side. That's a good question, I'll tell you about that. That's, uh, I like that part. When that baby comes into that little body, that mind in that body for the first year is just as developed as it's ever going to be. Until the mother's love and it starts developing the physical mind, that's when it starts losing. That's when we, that's when we lose it. As soon as the mother's, we realize that the mother's love is around us, we start losing and pushing everything back. It's like Maura told me, so what we gotta learn how to do is bring that subconscious back forward again and use it that way. And the reason I like it this way, I'll tell you why. I don't have to, it's not a religion. I mean, you, you don't have to be connected to a religion. I always look at it as just, this is what it is. There's nothing else. You can put it away to other things, or you can do this, but you're going to find out sooner or later, this is the way it is. When I came here to move that thing in Los Angeles, St. Paul, I took the scenic route, I called it. I went over, I, I remember going, I went over Denver. I hit a snowstorm in the mountains. <laughs> and I landed right on the front steps of the Civic or the Convention Center in Los Angeles. I walked in, went up the escalator to the floor. And as I went, I remembered everything I seen. So when they would call me back, I know Bill Jenkins w would ask me all this. They had everything down to tell him what it was. And I wasn't in Los Angeles before. I don't even know where the... If you told me to go to the convention center right now, I don't even know how to find it. But if I'm out of the body, I'll find it. How? Because you know all. When you're out of the body, you're, you're, you're breaking that whole block away from you, that head of yours. You're wide open. You, you become... You're not quite yet. You, you're not that far along. You become one with everything. You go back and see and read the your Tibetans. They've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years. But in this country, we lost it. I think it's time. I think it's time we we get, we get it back again. Because if we get it back again, and people can look from the outside at this earth, I think there are going to be a big changes. Well, how many wake up with a headache in the morning? You know why you wake up with a headache in the morning? You came in wrong. <laughs> That's right. You didn't come into the body right. The one thing you got to learn is how to settle in. You got to make practice landings of coming in slow. If you're going to go in real fast, how many wake up with a jump? That's your, that's your astral coming into the body. What you got to do when you re-enter, place the astral like a helicopter. And with your mind, you got to do this. Just lower yourself and don't go backwards. Have a, have a, and lower yourself right in gently. No. 
Like, you know, pretty hard to explain. Do you do it face to face? Face to your face? Head, head, you know, lay on your back and enter that way. With the astral body, it comes, just sink right in. What happens That's, if you're sitting on the chair? Well, same way that you just put, uh, position yourself in the way your body is and just slide in. Well, more people, they come through the head and down. That's where you, that's where you wake up with your headaches and stuff like that. I mean, we're, we're going to go into flight control. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Well, did, did you learn about uh, reincarnation because of your astral travel? Or no, I knew reincarnation since I was two years old. You knew instinctively yourself? Hey, I got to tell you something. I went to a Catholic school. <laughs> And the old nun in the second grade told me she's going to show us all a picture of the devil. And I said, I got a good teacher. He's with me all the time. His name is Jeremiah. He wears a white robe, long white beard, and he got a gold belt. He's been with me all my life. Matter of fact, he took me through the Korean War. And that nun said she's going to show me the picture of the devil. And I told her there was no devil. She said, whoever told you that? I said, that old man that sits on my bed every night and tells me that. <laughs> And boy, I'm not kidding you. I went over to Prairie's house, and they called my mother and dad. Wanted to know what was wrong. Where I'm getting all this stuff? I used to have when I was I used to have a paper out, and I used to walk. Back when I was born, you you weren't born in the hospital. You were born at home, which is better. She may always be born at home. We uh, and every time I'd go by that house where I was born, and I'd be out of the body. I never forget the time I told my mother I says before I was born. I remember looking over the house and seeing my mother, because you, before you come back into the body, you got the right to pick the parents. If those parents aren't going to do you no good, you don't have to take the body. But, and I told her about the different maternity dresses she threw away after I was born, and she couldn't believe it. You know, like our scientists, our doctors are going to say that they're going to, that they're coming in that someday that they'll get rid of crib death. There's no way they're going to get rid of that. Because that soul comes in that body and you stay, you, when you come into the body, you got one year to make up your mind if you're going to stay or not. And if that isn't going to do you no good, in that, in that year, you can go back and wait for another one. I argued this with a psychiatrist. <laughs> And I always kept talking about the soul in the astral body. He said, well, show me your soul. He said, it's nothing big, all back in your subconscious. I looked at him, I said, well, show me my subconscious. <laughs> you know, and he couldn't argue with me on it.